The art and craft of podcasting has exploded in the last couple of years with hundreds of new people starting hundreds of new podcasts each and every day. Maybe you're even considering starting your own and you don't know what equipment you need, how to set up a studio, and what it's gonna take to make it happen. In this video, I'm gonna focus on helping you set up your own home podcasting studio, no matter what your budget happens to be. Let's get into it. This is the place, the place for podcasters. Hey everybody, Brian here with Summit City Studios, and this is the place for podcasters. On this channel, we talk about tips, tools, and tech to help you create a great sounding podcast. And as I mentioned in the intro, I want to focus on helping you set up your home podcasting studio, regardless of what your budget happens to be. And when I talk about a studio, I'm not necessarily talking about something like I have here. This is one option, and this is an option that I actually kind of grew into and worked myself into and picked up equipment along the way. So I'll save that for the end. I do want to talk about the equipment that I'm using and the setup that I have, but you don't have to start with this. So let's get out of this studio and move to another part of the house that might look something similar to what you could set up in your house for $100 or less. So here we are in what could be your home studio for under $100. And it's really simple. There's a couple pieces of equipment that you're gonna need. The first is your phone. You can record directly into your phone on the Voice Memo app, or what I'm using here is called Voice Recorder Pro. I think I paid $3 for it. It's a super simple app. There's other apps you can buy that give you a little bit more control over the audio input and even some processing at, before you export and editing possibilities. So. It's gonna run you maybe just a couple of dollars to do something like that. And the other thing I would suggest is what I'm using now too. This is uh, just the headphones that come with the phone. That's the Apple earbuds that have an inline microphone. Now, the reason I like this is because it gets the microphone close to your mouth and it's not gonna pick up a lot of the ambient noise in the room. So something like this that goes directly into the phone will give you better quality audio. Now, the other way you can do it is to pick up for about $100 a set of Apple AirPods or some other type of Bluetooth wireless earbuds that are gonna give you the, the audio in your ear, but they're all gonna also gonna have a microphone that's gonna record into your phone. Now, again, those are decent, but the trouble is they are gonna pick up a little bit more of the ambient noise in the room. Now, let me point out that I'm in a room here that it's carpeted. There's a couch, there's pillows, there's blankets all over the place. So if you are gonna use something like your phone or AirPods or wireless earbuds or even a wired inline microphone directly into your phone, it would be wise to be in a space that's quiet, a space that's gonna be as free of distraction as possible as you record, in a space that has a lot of soft surfaces. So you're not gonna get a lot of echo. It's gonna have a lot of natural sound dampening in the room. So this could be your home podcasting studio for $100 or less. So the next option I wanna introduce you to is a full podcasting home studio for under $500. That $100 studio will certainly get you started, but to really up the quality, you're gonna need to upgrade a couple of pieces of equipment. Now, the simplest way to go to upgrade your quality and keep it under that $500 mark is to get a nice USB microphone. This Blue Yeti you can find anywhere from $99 up to $130, which is what I think I paid for this Blackout Edition. So depending on the time of year you're buying, where you're buying, and what edition of the mic itself that you're buying, you can find it anywhere from $99 to $130. But there are other really nice, maybe even nicer USB mics out on the market. This one just happens to be the most popular and was available when I was needing one. But you can get the Rode NT-USB for I think about $170. And the Ensure now has an MV7 USB microphone that I think is running around $200 to $250 right now. But again, that's going to keep you under your $500 mark. So upgrading your mic to a USB mic is going to be maybe your next step. Also with the USB mic, one thing I love is the, the Blue Yeti comes with a tabletop stand, but I find that I'm 
kind of tall and it keeps the mic really low. So I like to have the mic closer to my mouth to pick up the best quality and much more of my voice than the noise around me. So one way to do that is with a tabletop mic stand or a boom arm. This one I'm using here is the Gator Frameworks. Uh, I think it's called the weighted tabletop stand with boom arm and I love it. It's super flexible. You can move it in any direction and this thing is heavy. It's not going to go anywhere. If you bump it, it's going to stand right up. Another thing that I like to use is the blue compass. I'll talk about that later. It's a boom arm that clamps to the side of the desk and it's really flexible. You can move it. You'll see that in the next segment of this video or the Rode PSA1. Both of those boom arms are going to cost you about $100. So $120 for this mic. I think this one cost me about $35 or $40 for this tabletop stand. Those tend to be a little bit cheaper or $100 for a Rode PSA1 or a blue compass boom arm also for about $100 is still going to keep you under that $500 mark. The other thing that I'm using that maybe I didn't have or didn't show in the $100 uh, studio setup is a nice pair of over ear headphones. Now these things are phenomenal because here's what's happening right now. I'm listening to myself talk which sounds really strange. Most of us hate the sound of our own voice but when you're recording a podcast, you want to know how you sound. You need to be able to adjust your levels. You need to be able to, if you're talking to a guest, to be able to make sure your levels match. And so having a nice pair of over-the-ear studio quality headphones are going to drown out the rest of the noise so you don't hear anything else going on but the sound of your voice and maybe someone else's voice that you happen to be talking to. One last thing, if you have money left over to keep you under that $500 mark is a shock mount. This one I'm using I think was fairly cheap. It was $20 or $30 I believe. It works really well with the Blue Yeti microphone that I have here. And here's why a shock mount is so valuable. If I tap on this mic stand, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear it a little bit. But if I were to have this Blue Yeti in the tabletop stand that it comes with, any little touch on the table is going to be really loud. Any click on the keyboard is going to be much louder. This shock mount is going to absorb a lot of that vibration so the sound doesn't get up into the microphone and end up in your recording. So full podcast studio for under $500. Get yourself a nice USB microphone that plugs directly into your computer. You can record in GarageBand or Audacity for free. A nice boom arm, a shock mount, and any cables you need and dongles you need to connect. And that'll get you your full podcasting home studio setup for under $500. Now there's one more podcasting studio setup that I wanna show you that you can set up in your home for under $1,000. But before I do that, remember if you're liking this video or finding any value in it, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Now let's jump into my home studio and I'll show you what I have set up for $1,000. Welcome back to my studio. I thought I'd give you a kind of behind the scenes tour right up here of some of what I have set up in this thousand dollar or less option for your home podcasting studio. So what you see on the table is what I use for every podcast that I record with the exception of the times I use the the Blue Yeti occasionally and again in a pinch have to use my phone, the voice memo option on my phone. Uh, but what you see here is uh, if you want to upgrade and do a thousand dollar or less, there's a couple things I would suggest. One would be Again, stepping up your microphone. Now, this isn't a necessity. There's a lot of people that do professional podcasting with a nice USB microphone like the Blue Yeti that we just looked at. But the XLR mic that I like to use is this one here. It's the PreSonus PD70. I also record on a Rode Pod mic in another studio for another podcast that I host. The boom arm that I like to use, this one here, is the Blue Compass boom arm. I like this one. It has a nice form factor. I also use the Rode PSA1, but the Blue Compass is, this is about a $100 boom arm, clamps right to the edge of the desk. The microphone here, the PD70 from PreSonus is about $120, $130. Uh, you might be able to get it for $99 if you find it on sale, but you can see the the prices continue to add up. You're going to also need an XLR cable that doesn't come with the microphone, so that's going to be anywhere from 10 to $50 or more, depending on the length and the quality of the XLR cable. The other thing that you're going to need is a mixer 
or a USB interface. The board that I like to use is the Rodecaster Pro. Now this is an all-in-one podcasting studio. This is gonna run about $600 for this mixer, but it's an all-in-one studio. It has four XLR mic inputs. It's got a USB input and a phone input, so you can do phone call interviews with guests potentially on your podcast, and it picks up pretty well. And it's got a Bluetooth input as well, so you can play music from your phone as intro, outro for your podcast, or maybe just musical interludes during the podcast as you take breaks. It also has an input for these eight sound pads that you can pre-program, great for intro, outro music, introducing a guest that you pre-record, ads that you might want to pre-record and add into your podcast or any other sound effects you might want to include in in your audio. So the Rodecaster Pro is a quality, quality board, mixer, and USB interface, all-in-one podcasting studio. So in total, that's going to run you about $600 for the board, about 100 for the boom arm, about 100 150 for the mic, depending on how much you want to spend, and you know the additional cables that you're going to need, the XLR cables, and I would suggest getting yourself a nice pair of studio quality over-the-ear headphones. So there you have it. This is my home podcasting studio that cost me about $1,000 to put the whole thing together, and this is stuff that I picked up over time. This wasn't a one purchase and done. This was a slow process to gather all this equipment. And that's what I would suggest for you as well. Now I have a bonus for you, regardless of what you're spending on your equipment here. If you have money left over, I would suggest getting some sound treatment in whatever room or studio that you happen to be recording in. A simple, simple way to do that is to throw blankets over the desk Record in a room that has pillows, a sofa, maybe even your bedroom. This isn't, you don't have to do video, so all you have to worry about is audio quality. And that's it. My three different home studio setups that I've used, one for under 100, one for under 500, and then as I continue to upgrade to up to $1,000 for a full home podcasting studio. I'd love to know what you're using in your home studio or what you're considering buying. So in the comments below, let me know your favorite setup and what you're using now, or maybe even what you hope to use in the future. If you have questions about any of the gear that I talked about here or questions about how or where to set up your space, let me know that in the comments as well. And if you're looking for more tips, tools, and tech on how to create a great sounding podcast, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more content just like this. One of the things that I know a lot of podcasters just don't have time for and maybe even don't enjoy doing is the editing and post-production of their podcast. But that's exactly what I love to do. So if you're looking for some assistance, visit me at summitcitystudios.com to find out how I can help you with that process.